Welcome and thank you for choosing Active Demand as your integrated marketing platform. This video is going to cover the basics of navigating around the user interface of Active Demand. When you first log into Active Demand, you will be presented with the dashboard screen which you're looking at now. This screen allows you to add KPIs or data widgets that give you views into your marketing performance. Each person who logs into Active Demand will have their own dashboard screen. So any changes you make to this screen, really it's not going to impact any of the other users in your account. So if you click this button, you'll be presented with a list of widgets that uh, uh, you can add to this, this specific tab. And there are a lot of widgets. And if you've integrated with Google Analytics, there's going to be a lot more widgets. And uh, depending on your account type, again, you'll be presented with a different set of widgets. One of my favorite widgets is the map widget. And what the map widget does is it maps all of the different data that's being collected. This is a new account, just like the account you're working with. So there is no data on the, on the, on the map yet. But once you have the, the uh, account set up and start executing on campaigns, we do uh, GYP lookups on all of the data. So you'll start seeing pins show up all over the screen. So it gives you a great view uh, that you can actually drill down into uh, uh, for your different signals being produced by your prospects or customers. Once you have a widget on the screen, you can uh, maximize the widget, you can change the date range. Most data widgets have a date range associated with them. And uh, you can go ahead and change the date range uh, for, the specific, uh, for, for the specific widget. And you can reorganize the widgets by dragging them around, etc. And again, creating a new tab, you can just uh, click this button here this icon here rather it'll bring up a new tab once you have the new tab you can add again widgets to this tab by either clicking on this button or icon or this icon here so again it's the case that there are many widgets and once you've uh, selected some widgets again when you log in you'll be presented with the data that's being presented on these widgets some widgets have uh, linkages to uh, specific uh, campaigns, campaign widgets, or drill down reports. Uh, a good example is the, um, let me just find one here for you, conversions trend. So this conversions trend, and again, this is a new account, so there's no conversions uh, uh, to, to, to track, but if you click here, there is actually a little speedometer and what the speedometer icon does is it brings you to a drill down report. So that brings me to the next section is just looking at the analytics tab there are two segments. There's more segments for different account types uh, but for all account types you will have a dashboard uh, which brings you to the dashboard that you see here and the drill down reports. And the drill down reports again can be uh, um, uh, opened by clicking on a specific widget or if you look here by clicking on the reports button uh, icon here in the menu you will be presented with the different report types and again depending on what account type uh, there will be more or less uh, drill down reports uh, as you see here so for example on the conversions report and again we have no data yet uh, so it'll be a boring report but once you start executing on campaigns you'll see that it uh, uh, has some very exciting things so for example uh, email this breaks out the conversions into the different conversions type and if you had conversions you would actually be able to drill into the individual who for example converted as a result of sending an email or converted as a result of search etc so moving down the left, we see accounts, which is um, breaks up your contacts into their company names or the employers of the contacts. And contacts are the individual prospects that uh, you've either imported, uh, imported or um, have been introduced to active demand via form submits or phone calls or what have you. And if a contact has an employer, the employer account will be created in the account section. And again, you can create new employer accounts, add employees to them, or uh, again, just uh, uh, add contacts, etc. So looking at the contact screen, you can see a list of all of the contacts or prospects that you have. You can drill into an individual prospect. You can see uh, whatever data is associated, what IP addresses the person has been engaging with, uh, as well as the activity log, which is very important, which will show you some of the things the prospect has been doing. 
And uh, moving farther down, contact lists. There's a whole video that talks about contact lists. This allows you to break up, or, or I should say, segment your marketing database uh, uh, using queries, et cetera. And again, like I said, there's a, a whole video that talks about that. So drilling into the contact lists, there's two lists that are created by default and they're a very important list. The most important one is the sales distribution list. This list, any contact that converts as a result of a form submit or a phone call, uh, there is a lead notification email that will be sent to uh, people who are on the sales distribution list and this will be considered a uh, sales uh, lead notification. So all sales lead notifications are sent to people who are on this list. So you can add people to the list just by editing the list, doing the query to bring people into the list or finding the contact opening the contact and there's a section in the contact edit screen that allows you to add people to a list. So it's important the only people you want to add to this list are clearly people who work for your company because emails that are being sent to this list are lead notification emails. So edit it by clicking this button here. Again, these two lists are our are, uh, are default system uh, uh, contact lists and therefore you cannot delete them. Automation, there is, um, uh, for all accounts, there is these two tabs, which is, or two menu items, which is campaigns and autoresponders. Campaigns, this is where you are putting effort into trying to get a population of people to try to do something. For example, maybe it's an AdWords campaign or maybe it's an email campaign. And again, you're trying to uh, apply pressure to a population of people and get those that population of people to, um, uh, to do something and convert and the conversions and the effort uh, put into the campaign will be tracked on the cam uh, in a campaign. The next tab is autoresponders. In active demand, there are um, forms that you can export and put them on your website, and there are landing pages that have forms. And whenever a form is filled out, whether it is exported and on your website as a web form, or the form is actually part of a landing page, there is a workflow that is executed as soon as the form is submitted. And the workflow is called an autoresponder. In the autoresponder, this workflow uh, is basically where you control what emails are going to be sent to the prospect as a result of the form submit. And that is in the autoresponder section. Now, as far as assets, assets are things that you will be building and reusing and uh, engaging with as a as part of uh, your campaign efforts. So uh, moving down the left, email library, this is where you build your email templates. There's a lot of templates that come with active demand and uh, uh, you can customize some of these templates and save them as your own inside your email library or create a template from scratch uh, in the email library and it'll be accessible in all of the workflows like the autoresponders or in your campaign emails etc. Page li li library, same story, this is for page templates or landing page templates rather. Again, uh, Active Demand has many landing page templates for you to choose from if you're building a landing page. But again, you can save a, a, one of your favorite pages into, um, into the page library so that you can, uh, uh, again, use it as the basis for creating new landing pages. Published pages, this is where uh, you're again, if you're publishing landing pages, uh, a published landing page is a page that is currently live where uh, the public can view it and engage with it and fill out the forms, etc. Menus, this is where you create a menu for tying a bunch of landing pages together. And uh, the idea is, is you create the menu, you can include it on landing pages, and uh, uh, one pl it really gives you one place to manage the menu. And uh, so if you add pages to the menu, it adds to all of your landing pages. So you can build micro uh, marketing micro sites by using the menus uh, in active demand. Web forms, these are uh, uh, survey forms, uh, conversion forms, what have you that you can export and put on your landing page.
Phone call tracking, one of the most powerful aspects of active demand, this allows you to create trackable phone numbers. A trackable phone number is a number that is uh, created in active demand, a phone number. You take that phone number, you put it on your website or uh, your offline ad or your business cards, and whenever that number is, is called, in active demand, the number is forwarded to your sales line, for example. And whenever the number is called, you get, uh, again, uh, some great statistics. You get a lead that's generated and sent off to uh, sent off to your sales team. Next is the image library. And uh, in the image library, uh, any images that are uh, created, uh, or I should say uploaded into active demand, show up in the image library. And a very important is the brand section. Uh, unlike other platforms that have the concept of a theme, uh, which is the stylistic elements of um, uh, stylistic elements of a uh, web page or landing page rather, or an email. Um, Active demand extends it a little bit further, and really the the brand section uh, we not only have the common style elements that are uh, as part that define your brand, as well we have the logos. For example, the email header logo, which is the default logo uh, whenever an auto um, autoresponder is fired. The default logo uh, in the email is this image here. And feel free to change it. Uh, another logo is is your brand logo and this has typically been scraped off of your website but if you want to uh, put a logo in here again it'll be the it'll be referenced in many of the landing pages and it'll also be referenced in many of the emails so very important to bring the logo into the platform and the favicon the favicon is this little is a little icon that shows up at the top of a tab on Chrome or uh, in their Explorer or what have you and again it's important to define this so when you have your landing pages the pages are set up and then there's the stylistic elements like the header uh, the header bar and button bar rather and the colors of the text and the colors of the background etc so uh, when you first set up the account some of these will be auto filled in but feel free to customize them to set uh, or define your brand uh, style and then there's the tagline uh, right here. Again, this is referenced. And uh, phone number, it'll pull from the account settings of when you first went through the wizard or any of the trackable numbers as well will be access accessible here. So the whole idea of this brand is in one place you define the brand and it will be referenced uh, in many of the landing pages and uh, emails. So really brand consistency is the key to uh, driving um, Dri driving your 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 growth and uh, hence we put all of the elements for the brand in one place which is in the brand so definitely spend some time get your brand so it matches your website it's a extremely important part of uh, configuring active demand and uh, finally, we have the shared link section here. And on the shared link section, uh, a shared link is a tracked link. And a tracked link is typically part of a campaign. So you would create a link similar to you, what you do with Bitly or some of these other link shortening platforms. If you create the shortened link in active demand, you actually get a lot more data uh, because whenever somebody clicks on that link, if it's shared on a uh, anywhere, uh, the reality is, is that uh, active Active demand does the conversion, so you get that data in active demand. So uh, again, we've uh, we've covered the the basics of this video has covered the basics of active demand. There's a configure button that should show up on uh, on your um, uh, uh, on on your taskbar here, and if you click the configure button, you'll be presented with a list of items that still need to be done to fully configure active demand. And uh, the wizard should have covered a bunch of the stuff, but again, uh, uh, this icon will disappear once active demand is fully integrated and uh, again it's very important that you go through all of these steps to get the most out of active demand. So that concludes this video of the basics of navigating around the active demand platform. Uh, there's a lot more information uh, in this tutorial widget that you see here. You can look at many of the other videos that have been constructed for helping you get the most out of active demand or go to support.activedemand.com and you should be able to get there by clicking, clicking on this uh, little help button right here.
and it'll take you to the support portal. Support portal has lots of great tips and tricks for getting the most out of active demand.